Welcome back to more movie plots. And spoilers ahead. In USA's northernmost town of Barrow, Alaska, the locals experience an entire month of darkness during winter. Alcohol is also illegal during this month as people have a hard enough time in the dark without booze making it worse. Families say goodbye to their loved ones who leave to catch the last plane out of town, leaving only 152 residents cut off for an entire 30 days of night. A stranger has just arrived by ghost ship to the frozen shores, before he slowly treks through the snow all the way to his destination of Barrow. Coincidentally Sheriff Eben Olson and fellow police officer Billy Kitka have discovered that most of the town's cell phones have been destroyed. The two watch the last sunset they'll see for the next 30 days together, before returning back to town. On the way they come across Bo fixing his truck, and due to the oil leaking onto the street Eben writes him a ticket. When leaving he tells Billy that the ticket is just to remind him that he's still part of the town. Eben's estranged wife Stella is also attempting to make her way to the airport, but before she can reach it she is suddenly struck from the side by a rogue tractor, leaving her stranded in Barrow for the winter. Eben goes to the household of John and Allie who have just found all their sled dogs murdered, and were shown that earlier they were stabbed to death by someone off camera, coincidentally just after the stranger arrived. Eben goes back to the police station where his little brother Jake and his grandmother Helen tell him of another call from a nearby factory. The sheriff arrives to be greeted by Carter and Wilson who show him that Wilson's helicopter has been fed into a grinder piece by piece. With night finally here, the power plant caretaker Gus, hears something strange from outside and goes to check it out. He is quickly surrounded by a swarm of savage vampires who attack him and drink him dry. At the diner the stranger finally makes himself known to the locals and harasses the owner Lucy for some raw hamburger. Eben walks in and the stranger becomes confrontational, so Stella shows up and points her gun at him. He turns to lunge at her but Eben pins him down to the counter and arrests him. On the way to the station Eben says they've been having a hell of a day when the stranger says you just wait. Three factory workers get off of work, when one is snatched by a vampire and disappears into the darkness. His body drops next to them while one runs away and the other stands shocked as the vamps surround him. Eben asks the stranger how he got there since they would have seen him if he traveled there by plane, but he remains silent. Helen confesses that she has cancer and has been growing medicine herself inside her home, but didn't want to tell her grandson the sheriff. The computers go dead, and the stranger then begins to talk about how they are all helpless against what's coming. He says that this time they'll take him with them, but as soon as Eben asks who they are the power goes out across the entire town. The station's backup generators kick in so Eben decides to go to the power station by himself to check on Gus. He sees that the door is busted open and follows a blood trail, leading to Gus's severed head impaled on a pole. So Eben drives down Main Street warning everyone to go home and arm themselves, and for those without generators to gather at Lucy's diner. While the couple are still mourning over their sled dogs, a vampire smashes through the kitchen window and attacks Allie. Before John reaches her she is dragged outside and underneath their home. He gives chase but is slashed in the face and has his leg broken, before Allie is dragged away for good. Back at the station, the stranger says that the cold they are feeling isn't the weather, but it's instead death approaching. He boasts that he will be rewarded for helping them, then grabs Jake by the throat when he gets too close. Eben shoots him in the arm releasing his brother, then handcuffs him to the cell before demanding to know who his friends are. But the stranger refuses saying that he doesn't speak to dead men. Eben gives his family a taser to watch the prisoner and goes with Stella to get the only other officer in town. As they drive through the snow to Billy's, a vampire jumps on top of the car and begins to smash the roof apart. Eben shoots him through the roof but the bullets have hardly any effect, so Stella slams on the brakes and they manage to shake him off. They then hear Helen screaming over the radio so they speed back to the station, finding the place covered in blood and Eben's grandma and Jake missing. The stranger sits in his cell sad that the vampires didn't take him with them, and asks Eben to kill him. The undead horde headed by their leader Marlo walk into town and begin their siege on Barrow. He and a female vamp named Iris attack a couple in their home, impaling the man to the wall with a fire poker while making his wife watch. Marlo then plays a record while Iris drinks the wife, and the whole town is shown to now be under heavy attack. Marlo tells the other vampires to cut off the heads of their victims so they don't become bloodsuckers as well, and they easily rip through nearly the entire population in a single night. Eben and Stella make it to Lucy's diner and see that a group of survivors are holed up and that Jake is still alive, but he says that the vamps got Helen. They can't stay in the diner, so Eben sends them to a place with an attic to hide in while he and Stella go to collect supplies. On the drive, vampires suddenly stop their truck in its tracks, so Eben blows the head off of one of them but Marlo snatches his gun. The vamps flip them over but before they can pull the helpless couple out, Bo comes plowing through them in his truck and allowing Eben and Stella to jump in. 
the three head to the attic and meet up with the rest of the townspeople, sleeping in shifts and rationing the food they have for the next few days. Marlo goes to the police station and thanks the stranger for his work, then breaks his neck. Seven days later and a survivor named Kirsten walks through the street screaming for help, but Eben notices that she is being used as bait. When that doesn't work she is confronted by vampire Arvin, she tells Marlo that everyone must be dead before she prays to God. Marlo says no God, then the vampires begin slashing at her before Arvin finishes her off. Eben sneaks outside and attempts to get to the police station to retrieve some weapons, but finds John hiding underneath the house still alive. He tries to help him stand up but realizes his friend is now a vampire. John tries to resist the urge but can't and attacks Eben, so having dropped his gun Eben grabs a nearby axe and cuts John's head off after a few swings. Eben gets back to the house and passes out, while Wilson's father Isaac suffers from dementia and escapes out a window. Against Stella's wishes, Wilson decides to go outside to look for him and knocks her down waking Eben. The two quickly hide, while Arvin comes into the house having heard the commotion. But he hears Isaac's name being shouted from the street and leaves. Wilson is then snatched and killed off screen, while Marlo sees that John was turned into a vampire and gets mad. The survivors hear a noise on the roof and think that it's a creature of the night, but it's just a snowstorm. So they decide to take the opportunity to search for supplies while they know the vampires won't be outside. They all make it to the store and begin taking food, when they come upon a vampire girl who attacks them and scratches Carter's face. All of them work together to pin her against the wall while Jake hacks off her head with the axe. Ten days later and the survivors decide to try to make it to the police station for more security. Figuring the vampires to be allergic to sunlight, Eben causes a distraction on the way to Helen's house with the intention of using her ultraviolet lights against the vampires. Eben starts the generator and waits in the house with the lights as the creatures begin to surround the place. Iris is the first to enter but she is knocked back with the light and covered in burns, so the other vamps cut the power and enter as Marlo puts her out of her misery. The rest of the survivors are jumped by a single sucker and lose one of the group, but manage to make it inside the station. With Eben telling Stella over a walkie-talkie that he is being pursued by vampires, Bo takes his tractor and attacks the foreign invaders with it, shredding them with its chainsaw and a shotgun until eventually crashing into a building. The bloodsuckers surround him, so Bo lights up a flare and drops it into a box of dynamite, blowing the storefront apart, but somehow surviving. Marlo mocks humans for destroying themselves when they can't destroy their enemy, then crushes Bo's head with his foot. Eben makes it back to the police station where Carter reveals that he is beginning to turn from the vampire scratch. He doesn't want to live forever and wants to be reunited with his family in heaven. So Eben walks him to another room where he cuts his head off, leaving only Stella and Jake, as well as Denise and Lucy left alive. With only three days left of darkness, Eben sees a light coming from Billy's house, so the main group go to an oil factory on the edge of town while Eben and Stella go to Billy's. They find him still alive but he says he didn't want his family to suffer at the hands of the vampires, so he killed them but the gun jammed before he could do himself in. The two help a wounded Billy towards the oil factory but see some bait walking down the street in the form of Gale. Stella bites, so Eben and Billy split up to try lead the vampires away from her. They both make their own way to the factory but Arvin follows Billy inside, and they reconnect with the rest of the group but hear that Stella still hasn't arrived. Suddenly Arvin drops down behind Billy and bites into his throat, so Eben sticks it in the back with an axe. It turns to go at Eben but Billy tackles it from behind into the grinder, killing Arvin but ripping Billy's arm off also. Billy's screams begin to change into vampire screeches so Eben decapitates his best friend with the axe. Marlo tells the others it took them centuries to convince humans that vampires aren't real, and demands that they find and kill the remaining witnesses. Finally Stella makes radio contact with Eben, having been hiding underneath a car with Gale keeping silent this whole time. With only one night left until sunrise, the vampires burst a pipeline causing the streets to be filled with oil. Marlo sets the oil on fire, leaving Stella and Gale to either run and be eaten, or stay and be burned to death. Eben decides to take some of Billy's blood and hugs Jake for the last time. He injects himself with it and painfully transforms quicker than a regular bite. Now a vampire, Eben walks out into the middle of the street and straight up to Marlo, punching him in the face before the two fight. Being the older more experienced creature of the night, Marlo arrogantly beats Eben up and throws him around. He breaks Eben's hand and smashes him against a car while the other vampires cheer him on. As Marlo lunges at him, Eben punches his arm straight through and out the back of Marlo's head, killing him. The remaining vampires instantly lose their hype and scurry off to wherever they came from, as Stella approaches with the rest of the survivors and sees that Eben is now Nosferatu. The two decide to perch on top a snowy hill and watch the first sunrise in 30 days together, as it painfully kills Eben in Stella's arms. And the movie ends. 
So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.